fighting out of Dagestan, Russia, fighting out of Makhachka, Russia, fighting out of Dagestan, Russia, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world, Habib, the Eagle. UFC is home to a very diverse international fighter roster, having champions from Brazil, USA, Australia, Nigeria, Cameroon, Kyrgyzstan, and Venezuela. One noticeable exclusion from that list is Russia, a country that has really blossomed in terms of MMA in the last decade. When Khabib Nurmagomedov signed for the UFC in 2012, he was the only Russian in the organization. They hadn't had a Russian in the UFC for several years. When you look at it now, the UFC has 27 Russian fighters on the current roster. Only the US and Brazil have more. Half of those fighters are ranked, which is an absolutely outstanding percentage. With fighters like Pyotr Jan, Islam Makhachev, Askar Askarov, and Zabit Magomed Sharipov being considered elite. The two-time UFC bantamweight champion of the world, Piotr, no mercy, yeah! It's clear that the level of fighters coming from that region has improved significantly, and we here at Athlete Central are here to tell you why. If you're enjoying the video, please drop a like, and let's jump straight into the countdown. Number five. Culture. Let's start off with the culture in Dagestan. The region promotes hyper masculinity. The years of life in the mountains have idealized physical prowess and toughness as characteristics that are essential for any man in the region. This is all deeply rooted in the country's history. The Dagestani have fought with neighboring tribes for centuries on their quest for survival, and that has evidently translated well in the new generations. I think it's our culture, you know, it's like. Everybody tried to be tough. The Republic is predominantly Muslim, a religion that is quite conservative. This means that the youngsters of the region are not really distracted by relationships at a young age. The teenagers are not chasing girls. They are focused on improving themselves. Besides that, the Ramadan fasting that they do keeps them in perpetual great shape year after year. Some nutritionists may consider it unhealthy, however others claim that the reason fasting is included in a lot of religions is to keep the people healthy. It may be detrimental in a fighter's career because they cannot compete during Ramadan, their energy will be drained. However, they are re-energized after the process and yet again able to compete at a high level. The fighters themselves also accredit the religion as their key to success. God give me everything. Islam Makhachev made this comment about his teammate Khabib Nurmagomedov. It's Khabib's mindset for a long time. He's first of all, a Muslim, and then a fighter and everything else. He's seen a lot, become the UFC champion. He must give a right example and show what real Muslims are supposed to be, not the Muslims that commit disgraceful things in other countries. Number four, rough upbringing. Most youth in Dagestan are not very wealthy. Their parents cannot provide them with a secure future, which is true for a lot of people, but in this region, they are highly motivated to succeed through sport, which we will get to later on, so stay tuned. Brawls and street fights in the area are commonplace, minting the fighting mentality in the youngsters. And fights in the US seem very timid compared to the ones in that region. There are multiple clips of fist fights arising in the Dagestani area. A reason for this is that comments that may seem very mild in the West are considered an insult there. Just like when Artem Lobov called Khabib a chicken and the whole drama ensued with Dagestani fighters surrounding him and Connor throwing a dolly at Khabib's bus. Fun fact. Khabib Nurmagomedov's cousin Abubakar caused a lot of trouble for him in their childhood, instigating fights and getting into unnecessary scuffles. Khabib said, all the time this guy was fighting in the streets, said Khabib on growing up with Abubakar in Dagestan. It's very different over there. All guys are tough, and everybody is ready to fight all the time. I was always fighting because of him in school. He looks like a good guy, but he was a troublemaker. Number three, orientation on sports. The region's strong orientation on sports is another thing that factors into the fighter's success. <laughs> I 
Obviously, wrestling is the dominant sport, but we'll get into that separately in our top spot, so stay tuned. The kids in Dagestan are introduced to sport from a very young age, meaning they have experience in that fighting climate very early, performing under the bright lights in an environment that is unlike anything we could dream of experiencing. The blended nature of their fighting sports is a crucial factor. The majority of fighters coming out of the region have experience in combat sambo. Okay, hold your breath because we're about to list all the martial arts incorporated in this sport. You ready? All right, let's go. The sport includes judo, jujitsu, Greco-Roman wrestling, catch wrestling, karate, muay thai, taekyan, pankradian, Russian bare knuckle boxing, kurash, alish, boch, and shirum. That's a lot of martial arts and an amazing base for MMA. Basically, the only thing missing is technical boxing or kickboxing, but that can be mastered with karate and Muay Thai, both of which are incorporated in the sport. Fighters like Islam Makhachev and Khabib Nurmagomedov have practiced Sambo for a long time prior to their MMA career, and a lot of fighters outside of Dagestan and Russia are masters of sport in Sambo. Number two, climate. We mentioned the mountains earlier, but this actually plays a huge part in a fighter's conditioning. I am from Rio Mountain. Training at a high altitude allows fighters to thrive under normal conditions. When training at elevation, the body gets used to the low level of oxygen the body is intaking, putting the body under stress without a limited supply of oxygen. This means when even more oxygen is available, the body will give out a lot later, since it's used to performing under so little oxygen. The extra fuel is basically like a cheat code for the fighters, explaining the insane cardio that the Dagestani fighters have. GSP's coach Farah Sahabi also commented on this in an interview, and coming from one of the best coaches in the game, it says a lot. He said they can credit their incredible cardio to the fact that they train in high altitude and are exposed to naturally rigid terrain that makes training all the more difficult and the fighters unbreakable. And I love Khabib, I'm a mega Khabib fan, guys, I'm telling you, like, I'm a mega Khabib fan. A young Khabib Nurmagomedov even trained in forest. His beloved father made him wrestle bears to increase his toughness, and there's actual footage of Khabib as a child wrestling a bear in 1997. Quite spectacular. Let's take a look at it. Bears aside, part of the lightweight goat's training is swimming in the cold rivers of Dagestan to build up his endurance. I mean, taking cold showers is one thing, but swimming for that long in a cold river, going against a strong current, is completely insane. And it's part of what makes him so great. Number one, wrestling. Of course, wrestling was going to be number one on our list. Habib Nurmagomedov, people are scared of this guy. His grappling is literally on another level. That's what most Dagestani fighters are known for, right? I mean, just take a look at these top fighters who are amazing wrestlers. Rustam Kabilov, a lightweight with wins over names like Vince Pichel, Yancey Medeiros, and the BMF himself, Jorge Masvidal, with his relentless wrestling and amazing suplexes. Ramazan Amayev is also from Dagestan, a UFC welterweight who wrestles to dominant victories over the likes of Nicholas Stoltz, David Zawada, and Sam Alvey. Number two flyweight Asghar Askarov also uses that Dagestani wrestling to work himself into a potential title eliminator fight against city kickboxing star Kai Kata France. Of course, the other stars like Islam Makhachev and Khabib Nurmagomedov are notorious for their amazing wrestling credentials, leaving their opponents no room at all to breathe and using the signature Dagestani handcuff a lot in their grappling exchanges. The reason they are so good is their style of wrestling. Their mentality is definitely unlike American wrestlers. Like legend Daniel Cormier said on his old podcast with Ariel, they keep on shooting for takedowns even if a couple of them get stuffed while Americans may give up on it and change to striking if their game plan isn't working. Dagestanis are relentless. Khabib is a prime example of not giving up until a takedown is secured. He doesn't care if one takedown is stuffed or 10, he will keep going until his opponent is pinned to the floor. Another UFC wrestling legend, Randy Couture, said that Dagestanis train more on technique and skills, which is a more beautiful style of wrestling. Indeed it is, seeing lightweights Khabib and Islam handle American heavyweights with ease at the gym is a thing of beauty. They go up against all American wrestlers and have no problem out wrestling them. 
Former 1FC and Bellator champ Ben Askren also said that for Dagestanis, wrestling is a way of life, which is true. They dedicate their childhood to the craft and blend it with the technique that's taught over there. There is no better recipe for a good wrestler. Practice and good mentorship are almost unbeatable, and Dagestani fighters have that when it comes to wrestling. Well, that wraps up today's video on what makes Dagestani fighters so good. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Let us know what videos you'd like to see next in the comments below. Until next time, stay safe.